Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. It's currently Tuesday morning, uh, this video will go up on Wednesday afternoon and the day after that on Thursday we're actually going on a little trip, going on a little holiday. Uh, we'll be gone for eight days so quite a long time. So today I just want to give you guys an update on all my tanks and show you how I prepare them for our holiday. Now during those eight days, there will be somebody coming over to our house just to feed our cats. But I've told this person not to worry about their tanks. In my opinion, fish can easily survive without food for a week. I think even two weeks is fine. If you're gonna be away for longer than two weeks, I would probably you know, do some either install an automatic feeder or ask somebody to take care of your fish. But um, yeah, one week or two weeks is, is fine. Now what I do like to do beforehand is kind of kind of just get them a little bit extra food in the day leading up to the holiday, you know? So just kind of fatten them up a little bit just before you leave. I feel like the fish are actually confused, like, what are you feeding us again? What's happening? Normally it's just once a day, now it's like three times per day. <laughs> so let's actually do a little update on all the tanks and then I can tell you if I'm gonna make any changes just, just before I leave and you know, just give you guys a bit of an update. So let's actually start with the mini desk aquarium. This one is very popular. The video is still getting a lot of views. So this one is now three, four months old, something like that. I think I've set it up in end of November. It's now like, mid-February so yeah something like three months it's doing quite okay can't really complain um, the only thing I don't really like about this tank is how the, the moss on the wood is currently looking the goal of this tank was to kind of replicate one of my older setups uh, that was a high-tech setup with CO2 pretty strong light uh, this is a no filter setup so no CO2 in here either the light is pretty strong but I'm using a lot of floating plants and you can definitely see the difference in the uh, in the moss like in the high-tech setup, the moss would look a lot better. But still, I mean, for such a low-maintenance setup, it's, it's looking quite good. Shrimps are healthy. There's actually one baby guppy in there as well. On the build video from this desk aquarium, I got a lot of questions about the plant that's growing out of the top. I think I forgot to mention it, but this is an asparagus fern. It's a pretty common house plant. And I've just removed all the potting soil, cleaned up all the roots, and I basically just wedged it between the glass and that piece of wood. So the, the roots are pulling nutrients from the water column. And it's uh, doing quite well. It's growing slowly, but um, it looks healthy. This one is actually growing a bit big. I need to trim it, but yeah, it's just a simple house plant. So for this desk aquarium, there's actually two things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna shorten the photo period. It's now eight hours. I'm gonna reduce that to six hours. I do still get a bit of algae on the glass. And I think if I reduce it a little bit, then it should be fine. And I also want to fill up all the way to the top because this desk aquarium is also a drinking bowl for our cats. They just love to drink from here. They will not drink any regular tap water. They need to drink aquarium water. So I'm gonna make sure it's filled all the way to the top and that's it for this tank. Then for the beta tank, I just wanna make sure that the heater is still working. Yeah, it's set to 26 degrees. The water feels nice and warm, so that's good. So the beta tank recently got a light upgrade. I'm now using the Blade Fresh Water from Aqua Illumination. And this is a pretty powerful light as well. Um, it's only been on for a few minutes, but if you see this tank during the end of the day, like the plants are purling like crazy. So here I'm also going to reduce the photo period or the intensity or both, I'm not sure yet. But um, besides that, this tank is doing good. If I still have time, I might also trim the, the carpet because the Monte Carlo is getting quite thick. Um, but I think I'll just leave it, it should be okay. Yeah, just uh, ticking along. Beta's doing good as well. So I'll just make sure I'll, uh, I'll feed them a few more times just before we leave. This tank also has a lid, so I don't really have to worry about evaporation. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, so then the shelf. I actually have two new additions on the shelf that I'm still kind of want to keep a secret from you guys. Don't worry, one video is gonna be released on Saturday, so it's coming soon. The other setup still needs a little bit more time to mature, so I'll probably show that after I come back from my trip. So let's focus on these three tanks for now. So let's start with the XXL no filter vase. I think this one is now four months old, but I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, it's doing good. Everything is just kind of thriving in here. We really love the big red cherry shrimp. They're just super beautiful. Still haven't seen any pregnant ones, so that's, so that's a bit of a bummer. 
I've also recently noticed a little bit of algae. So you can see some algae on the Anubias over there. A little bit on the wood. And just a little bit on the substrate here. And that basically appeared a few days ago after I changed, well not a few days, a few weeks ago, after I changed some of the moss. So this patch of moss here and that patch of moss is basically new. It's a weeping moss. And before that I had some of the same moss as this one. This is giant moss. But I don't really like how this giant moss looks. As you can see it's quite stringy, it's not really branchy. I like the look of this moss a lot more. So after I changed that out, um, kind of got a little bit of yeah, just waste organics that kind of just got pulled into the water column. It's no big deal. I think it will either go away by itself or we can just uh, kill it with a little bit of liquid carbon. I'm actually not going to do anything to this one just before my trip. Um, I'm going to leave the photo period as it is because the light is not super powerful. Yeah, just uh, going to leave it as is. Moving on to this one. This is one of the experiment tanks and I actually only have just one left. I've decided not to do any experiments anymore for the foreseeable future. Kind of lost interest, no, kind of now not lost interest. I just didn't really have any inspiration for new experiments anymore. So I decided to kind of just give it a break. I mean, we, we tried all the really interesting stuff like CO2 versus no CO2, um, different kinds of fertilizers, different kinds of substrates. So decided to just uh, give a little break to those experiments and maybe in a, in a few months we'll do something new again. So this one is also going to be taken down soon. So we don't really have to spend much attention on this one. So then the last tank on the shelf for now is going to be this 30 centimeter cube. The build video from this one was released a week and a half ago. If you didn't see it, I'll leave a link on top of the screen here. Highly recommend you watch it. Um, just a beautiful planted tank, lots of color in here. I've added some uh, orange shrimp in here. And I've also added um, four sparkling gouramis. They are very shy. They just love to hide in this den dense plant mass. So I was thinking if I should add some more fish, just something to kind of add some movement to the bot to the top section, but I think I'll just leave it as it is. I mean, I don't necessarily need to see fish. I mean, of course I do see the sparkling grammys, especially when I'm feeding them, but I would actually love to see these sparkling grammys breed in here, but I'm not sure if that's possible, but I think if we just keep this dense plant mass, maybe add a little bit more floating plants to the top. I'm actually not sure, do sparkling grammys make a bubble nest? I'm not sure, I have to look that up. But yeah, it would be cool to see these guys breed in here. But it's just a super easy tank. I mean, since the startup, I think it's now been up, up and running for five weeks. And since the startup, I haven't had a single spot of algae in here. So yeah, I think the Twinstar E-Series is actually the perfect size for this, or the perfect power for this 30 centimeter cube. We love the plant here, the Lagenandra Meboldii. Love the red plant, that's the Persicaria Sao Paulo. Just looks really nice. So overall, this one has just been very easy to, to eat, very easy to care for as well. And I'm not going to do anything here as well. I'm going to keep the photo period as it is. Just going to make sure it's um, the water is topped off just before I leave. And that's it. Well, I just want to make sure that the CO2 bottle uh, is working properly. I've actually just refilled it, so I don't need to check if it's full. But just want to make sure the CO2 is working properly before I leave. Okay, moving on to the Big Shallow. This one has now been set up for three months, I think. If you're not really familiar with the Big Shallow story, I've had some issues with the cabinet. So I had to take the previous layout down, reinforce the cabinet and make this new layout. So this new layout has now been up and running for two and a half, three months, something like that. And it's doing okay. It's not great. It's not bad either, but it could be better. So I've actually trimmed the stem plants last Saturday. So it's looking a little bit bare right now. I've also recently added some branches with moss on top of it, just to kind of make it look a little bit more natural. Quite like that. But um, I'm just having bad luck, bad luck with the dwarf cichlids in here. I had a beautiful pair of the um, Apistogramma Hongsloi, male and a female. And I was really trying hard to breed them, so making the water softer, turning up the heater, doing, wa doing water changes with cold RO water. And at some point, the female was really super yellow. I thought, okay, no, they're going to start breeding soon. She actually made a home in, uh, in this small cave. Pretty sure that she laid eggs already. And the days after that, I didn't see her anymore. So I thought, probably in a cave, probably lying, laying eggs, probably protecting her eggs. And then a few days later, I saw her lying somewhere in the corner, KO. Um, and a few days after that, the, uh, the male decided to pass away as well. So super sad. And it's kind of been, a, it kind of happened a couple of times already with these dwarf sickness. So I'm just not really having the best luck. Um, so yeah. Besides that, I've added some guppies because the green eels were very shy. They were not really coming out. 
So the, uh, the copies kind of help give them a little bit more confidence, making sure that everything is safe. And now they're showing themselves a little bit more, but yeah, the Big Cello, it's doing okay, but it's definitely not my favorite at the moment. And then in terms of the holiday preparations, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm gonna yeah, top off the tank nice and high, because I do have quite a lot of evaporation in this tank. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's uh, nice and full. Besides that, I'm not really gonna do anything. Um, I'm running the lights quite low. The skylight is running on like 30, 30 40%, something like that. I was running CO2 in this tank from the very beginning, but um, the bottle ran out, decided not to refill it and just kind of let it be. We have very easy plants in here and they don't really need CO2. So after the CO2 ran out, I just kind of reduced the light intensity. I'm just letting it tick along just fine. Moving on to this side of the room. I'm actually behind the camera. I have one more new setup in what used to be the CPD river tank. That one has been up and running for a few weeks now. And the build video for that one is going to be released not this Saturday, but the Saturday after that. So in like in a week and a half from now. I sh we should be back home on Friday. So if the tank is looking good, I'll finish the video and release it. But if, it if there's no video on Saturday, then you kind of know that something went wrong. So we just have these two left. The 70 liter scrapers tank and the uh, 45P with the P puffers. And now also a few of these CPDs. So let's start with the 70 liter scrapers tank. Actually, let me turn on the light screen. This tank always looks a bit better with the light screen on. Yeah, see? It's a huge difference. I like it a lot. So this one has been rescaped, I don't know, two months ago, something like that. And it's doing really good. We have one pair of the uh, honeygrams in here. And I've actually recently added one more female. I noticed that this male was constantly chasing the female. So I thought, let's give her a bit of a break. Let's add a second female. And since then, it's a little bit more quiet in here. So that's good. I actually did a trimming session on this tank last weekend as well. So I trimmed some, some of these stems in the background. So you can't really see them right now they should be nice and red as well but yeah they just need to grow back and yeah besides that there's actually not really much to say on this tank i did get a few comments in previous videos that this tank might be a little bit overstocked but i think it's okay we have some of the uh, ember tatters in here i think maybe a group of 20 and then like 10 of the green neon tetras and then there's a few uh kuba tyras boros as well so it's a bit of a mix but I don't think it's really overstocked. There's quite a lot of plants in here and there's not actually that much space to swim anymore. So most of the fish are in the front. So it kind of looks a bit busy, but yeah, we have a huge filter in here. Here we go. So there's the Oase Filto Smart 300. And it, uh, I think it does 1200 liters per hour. So it's quite a powerful filter. So just before we leave on holidays, it's always good to check if the CO2 bottle is still full. This one still seems okay. So nothing to worry about. So with this tank, I'm running pretty high light. I'm using the Chihiro's WRGB2 Pro, very powerful light. I think I'm running it on 75%. I always get a lot of questions about my light schedule, so I'll overlay that on the screen right now. So I'm thinking for this tank to also reduce the photo period by two hours, just keep the lights on for six hours. Also, this tank is next to a, uh, next to a window. And um, right now, the, yeah, the weather is getting better. We're getting more sunlight, so this tank is getting, actually getting quite a bit of sunlight during the day. So yeah, definitely reduce the photo period and just make sure that the uh, the water is nice and topped off. I think that's it. And then the last thing to update you guys on is the 45P. Um, in here we have three dwarf pea puffers and I've recently also added four of these Celestial Pro Dinos. Wasn't a very good move. It's not a very good combination. The pea puffers are a little bit scared of the CPDs it seems, so I don't really see them as much anymore. So I'm going to remove the CPDs put them in that tank that I've not shown you guys yet, but it's gonna be released in one and a half week. Yeah, the tank itself is doing good. It's not handling the sunlight as well as this tank though. Um, I'm getting a little bit more greenest algae on the glass if there's too much sunlight here, but it still looks good. Really love the patches of the Ricardia moss. In terms of holiday preparations, again, just making sure that the water level is nice and high. I think the CO2 is... Okay, CO2 bottle is running sort of low, but I think it should definitely last us a few more weeks, so nothing to worry about there. So I think that's it for all the tank updates. There's actually one more thing I want to do before we leave on holiday, and that's to install a camera. So I think the last time we were gone for more than a week was like a year and a half ago. And back then I also had a little uh, security camera looking at the tanks and just kind of gives you a bit of peace of mind, you know. The camera broke, so I bought a new one. This one was 25 euros on Amazon, so I'll leave a link in the video description. Had very good review, so let's open it up. Let's see if it's any good.
Nice, so we have the camera itself, then we have two plugs actually, so EU and UK. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, but maybe it will come in handy someday. Uh, we have a small USB cable, and then the instructions are download the app, plug in the camera, and in the app, add your camera. <laughs> That's it. Super simple. Let me just quickly do that, show you guys the end result. Okay, that's the camera installed, and I mean, for 25 euros, it's not that bad. It does what it needs to do. I'll be able to see my tanks and have some peace of mind. So I think that's the end of the video, guys. Time for me to switch on the holiday mode. Like I said, videos will just keep coming as normal. And I'll see you guys after my holiday. Thanks for watching. See you next time.